So I've been using an Apple Magic Trackpad and a Logitech MX Master 3 mouse for many hours a day for years for both work and as a creator. Both of these devices are at the top of their segment and do an excellent job for what you need. Today I'll go over pros and cons of each and considerations you may have when choosing one or the other. And if you stay to the end, I'll give you my recommendation on what I use and it may be a surprise. Starting off with some of the basics with the Apple trackpad, you can get it in two colors, which is white and black. With the device comes a braided cord, and it's a newer style that they've been shipping out with these, and they're really nice quality. And I'm going to tell you the good news and the bad news about this cord. The good news is that it's got USB-C on one end, so if you're going to charge it from your hub or your computer, you can use the latest port standard. However, on the other side of this cable is the dreaded lightning connector, as Apple still fails to ship their keyboard, mice, or trackpads with the USB-C standard. I can't tell you how much this bothers me. They've now standardized their MacBook Pros, their iPads a few years ago, and even the iPhone this year. Not to mention, all my other chargeable electronics like battery packs or flashlights are all moving to USB-C, and it's so frustrating that I have to stick with this lightning cable. Whether traveling or just having them around the office, to make sure I can charge these Apple devices. So come on Apple, let's get with the program. The surface of the trackpad is very smooth. It's a nice piece of glass and it's never tacky under your fingers. Your hands slide effortlessly and I'm not sure if they use some special type of coating or a, way, or a special way of creating this glass, but it feels really nice. Now this next part is gonna blow your mind, but there are no moving parts. That's right, like a trackpad of the past on your computer, it was sort of this hinge mechanism where the whole trackpad would actually move in in order to register a click. On today's Apple laptops and trackpads, it's just a solid piece of glass on top of metal uh, with a little taptic engine, maybe a little speaker in here somewhere, but it knows that there's pressure and creates kind of that click feeling. But if you wanna feel something kind of freaky, turn the power off on the trackpad and then start pressing down on it. It actually feels like you're just pushing a glass brick. It's so weird how they create the effect so well. And obviously, with less moving parts means there's less to wear down or break. As far as the battery life, Apple states that this will get around a month before you'll need to recharge it. Switching over to the Logitech MX Master 3, this device also comes in multiple colors, one being space gray like the one I have, and pale gray, which honestly, to keep it simple, is uh, they're black and white, just kind of like the trackpad. Now, the MX Master 3, like many of the devices from Logitech with their various keyboards or mice, come with the Logi Options app so you can easily customize the device to your heart's desire. So on the side, I have these two control buttons, which I can choose to either do a copy and paste command, or I could use it for forward and backwards within a browser for websites. And with the vertical wheel, I could press down to do a middle click to open a web page in a new tab and so on. What's really nice about the app is I can set different actions, whether I'm in apps like Final Cut Pro or Photoshop or Safari, to really streamline my workflows. The battery life on this mouse is around 70 days of usage before you need to plug it into the USB-C cable to recharge it. And yes, thank God Logitech uses a USB-C port on this device right there. Thank you, Logitech. Now let's talk pricing. For the Apple Magic Trackpad, you're gonna spend 129 for the white version and 149 for the black version. Yes, I think it's sort of crazy that Apple charges more for a different color, but I guess obviously there's going to be a stronger demand for this black version as they continue to crank out more computers and laptops using the black or space gray palettes, and I guess that's just the way it's going to be. Now, for the MX3, this mouse is usually $99, but when I just checked on Amazon an hour ago, there's a discount for getting it at around $92. So you may want to see if that's still available, and if you're thinking of going this route. As always, I'll have links in the description below for the devices in this video if you want to check them out. Now looking at features on the trackpad, gestures are very natural and compatible with the Apple ecosystem. If you want to swipe between windows, see all your open apps at once, use mission control, all of that can be done on the trackpad, just how Apple designed. You'll see a lot of similarities with other devices like your iPad or iPhone as far as scrolling or pinching to zoom and so forth. For the MX3, you can also do gestures. So if you want to use this programmable thumb area on the bottom, you can hold it down and move your mouse up, for example, to open Mission Control, or move the mouse sideways while holding the button down to switch between desktop screens. 
And while it's not as natural, you don't have to miss out on the functionality that Apple provides. And as I was saying earlier, you can use these other programmable buttons on the mouse to enhance the options at your disposal with many different types of shortcuts. Now, one thing I really love about the MX3, and I wish Apple did this, was to make it super easy to switch devices that you're wanting to control. If we look at the bottom of this mouse, you'll see that there's a one, two, and three. And by pushing this little button, it'll show me which device I have set up. So for example, I could be working on my main computer, which is my Mac Studio here to my left. And if I have my iPad Pro alongside me for working on something else, I can push this button at the bottom to move to the number two device and I'm instantly controlling the mouse on my iPad. The scroll wheels on the MX3 are also very high quality and have a nice weight to them. You have your traditional vertical scroll wheel and what I love about this one is that you can have the normal wheel feel where it's kind of clicky or notched so you get that feedback as you're scrolling up and down. Or you can push this button on the top and it basically puts it into this infinity mode. So if you want to shoot down a long page of code or scroll down your photo library really fast, you just let it rip and it will spin freely until you put your finger back on to stop it. I've talked to a lot of people about this mouse and I think this is one of their favorite features. And not only do you get the vertical scroll wheel, but you also get this horizontal one as well. So if you want to scroll through your tabs in Safari or Google Chrome or use it to scroll your timeline like I do in Final Cut Pro, you can use this wheel to do just that. Both are extremely ergonomical, but in completely different ways. The MX3 just fits the form of your hand perfectly, and I might add only your right hand as they don't make a left hand version. Honestly, this is one of the most comfortable mice I've ever used. With the trackpad, I really like the ability just to relax your hand with no particular shape. If you're swiping or scrolling, it's just so effortless and you can bend your hand and whatever's comfortable for you at that time. Obviously, there's no weight to push around and I find it easier to engage because you don't need to necessarily perfectly line up your hand as the device is quite large and you can just pretty much use it anywhere. Now let's go over some of the pros and cons or other final comparisons and maybe I'll do a little nitpicking. If absolute accuracy is important to you, I would go with the MX3. And that's not to say that Apple Trackpad isn't accurate. But if I'm in Lightroom and I need to do pixel perfect editing or cutting video clips for hours in Final Cut Pro, the MX3 does take the edge with performance in that regard. For smooth scrolling, however, the MX3 isn't as good as a performer as the trackpad, even with smooth scrolling turned on. The MX3 is just a little jittery when scrolling web pages, though I think most people would never notice it unless you're directly compared it to the Apple trackpad. The trackpad is just so buttery smooth and is exactly like scrolling on an iPad or iPhone where it's just super smooth with how you are pulling your finger across the screen. But yeah, that infinity wheel on the MX3 can just be a game changer if you need to cruise down some mega Excel files or a photo album really fast. As promised, if you stuck around to the end, I told you I'd give you my recommendation and unfortunately it's not the cheapest option. And no, I'm not talking about the Apple trackpad, but actually getting both, and let me explain why. First off, being a creator, I need to choose the right tool for the job. If you are a carpenter, you wouldn't choose a hammer where you need a screwdriver. And often, when you need to go to a job where you need a screwdriver, you've probably packed both the flathead and Phillips into your tool bag because of the nuanced needs for both. And that's what I think about the trackpad and mouse. There are times I need dead-on precision, and there are times I need gestures and other flowing movements, and it's just a combination of both types of manipulation where I see the most productivity gains. An example is making this video. I can use my left hand on my trackpad for scrolling files or moving through my video timeline, whereas my right hand is placed in the cursor where I need to cut a clip and make an edit. And I'm not left-handed, but it actually becomes quite natural, especially with the trackpad. When you have both options at each side of your keyboard, your mind builds this system with how to create your own workflow. It's sort of like this dual hand orchestration and it gets super easy with time. Now I'm not suggesting every person go out and spend over $200 on peripherals, but if your income or your hobby depends on your productivity at a computer five, eight, 12 hours a day, just think about it. These devices will last you many years if you take care of them. And so you gotta look at the cost per day and I think you'll realize it's quite cheap, especially compared to the computers we upgrade from time to time and the cost that comes along with those. If however, you are like most people and just wanna get one or the other, I promise you, you cannot go wrong with either. Go with your heart. What kind of user are you? Do you enjoy the stock way Apple intended to use their gestures and swipes as on their MacBooks, for example? 
Are you browsing and checking email and some other simpler tasks like that? If so, the trackpad may be the best option for you. On the flip side, do you need a lot of flexibility and shortcuts, along with precision being the name of the game? Then maybe I would lean towards the MX3. All right, that's all about I have on this topic. Again, links are in the description if you want to check the devices out, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks, bye.